What's up everybody, this is Kerry. In my previous videos, I showed you how to use decision boundaries to pick games in rounds one and two of the NCAA tournament. And I also showed you how to use that to pick the overall champion. Now, I had a couple of questions from viewers and subscribers that asked me, what about the games that are not outside those boundaries or within the boundaries? What do we do with those games? Well, I'm really excited to show you today in this video, the Ken Palm prediction formula. So again, using Ken Palm stats exclusively, I'm going to show you the formula that is used on that website to actually make the game predictions, the probability, the win probabilities for each individual game. So it doesn't matter who's matched up in round one, round two, whatever, you can use these pre-tournament Ken Palm stats to make predictions about those matchups, each and every one of those matchups, and then use that to fill out your brackets. These are today's Ken Palm stats, 316, 2024. And you look down there, we see Houston, Connecticut, Purdue, and Auburn. Now, I just watched Purdue get beat by Wisconsin. So I'm really curious how that's going to affect their overall Ken Palm stats right before the NCAA tournament and what's going to happen with the selection committee. Is Purdue still number one seed? Probably, but we'll see. So here is the actual Ken Palm prediction formula, and I have this in a spreadsheet. And what I want to show you all here is that, look at the top here. I have Marquette and Connecticut. I have all these Kim Palm stats, including the adjusted tempo. This is needed for this prediction formula. We get what's really nice here, a point differential, which corresponds to the spread on that game. And then that converts to a win percentage, 69.7% for Connecticut, 30.3% for Marquette. This is for Saturday's games in the conference tournaments. And now we see over here, according to the Kim Palm website, that's a 70%, which we're really close here. San Diego State has a 54% probability winning. Same over here on the Ken Palm site, 70.7 for Houston, pretty much the same over here as well. 70.7 for Purdue, which rounds up to 71%, but they lost. They just lost to Wisconsin. And then 74.3% for Auburn, and it has 74% over here on the Ken Palm site. So I feel really confident that the formula that I'm using here in this spreadsheet is the correct formula. We're going to look at the formula here on a Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to show you how you can enter in the Adjusted offense, adjusted defense. This is a calculated uh, column here because that's just offense minus defense. So you just have to enter in the adjusted tempo. And then these two formulas are very simple, very basic formulas, not hard to do. The prediction formula here is not a secret. This is not a proprietary formula. It's a very basic formula uh, based on Ken Palm stats. And I found this on a LinkedIn website. I've seen this in the YouTube videos. The YouTube video that I suggested in my previous videos that used the log five distribution. This one uses a normal distribution, which is what, again, the Ken Palm uh, website uses. So with that in mind, let's get to the Excel spreadsheet and see how this works out. Okay, here's my spreadsheet. Now, when we look at this, this is an actual game that's going on on Saturday here. We have North Carolina State against North Carolina. We have their adjusted offensive efficiencies, adjusted defensive efficiencies, and we have to type those values into our spreadsheet. Then we have in this cell here, adjusted efficiency margin is just the offense number minus the defense number. So that's a calculated cell, very easy to put that in there. Adjusted tempo is also something you have to type in. Now here's where we get the point differential. It's very simple here. You just take the adjusted efficiency margin of that team minus the margin of the other team, and then multiply that by the adjusted, the sum of the adjusted tempos. Now these stats are for every 100 possessions. So if we add up both stats for both teams, we then divide by 200 and we get the corresponding point differential. E5 minus E4, you take that team's adjusted efficiency margin minus the other team's adjusted efficiency margin, times it by the sum of the tempos and divide by 200. Very simple formula, easy to put it in Excel. And then the win percentage is the following. This is where we use a new one. Again, I saw this on another YouTube video and I put a link in that into a couple of my responses for my previous videos, but that was using an older distribution called log five. And I, they don't, obviously Ken Palm doesn't use that anymore. They used to. So this is for a normal distribution and that's very well known in statistics. And if you look at that, what we do is we take that value, that point differential G5. And the second number here is the mean of those values, which we normalize that to be zero. And then the standard deviation of that is 11. So that means that these point differentials, mean of zero, standard deviation of 11. And then finally, we say we want this to be a cumulative distribution to get these percentages. And that's all we do. You, you type in that formula in this cell, 
and that is the win percentage or win probability for North Carolina. That's today, this is Saturday, against North Carolina State in the ACC tournament. So how do you fill out your brackets? If you don't have the boundaries, you just go to this formula, type in name, the team names, type in those three statistics, adjusted offense, adjusted defense, and adjusted tempo. And with the formula in the Excel spreadsheet here, it pops out your answer. So of course, the team that is green here is the team that you would pick to win the game and advance in the tournament. That's it. Very easy, very simple formula. Very easy to put in Excel or Google Sheets or whatever. Okay, so now that we have this information, we can make our own little spreadsheet and do the formulas here and do the prediction values. How are we going to use this? Well, as I mentioned in my previous videos, I talked about the decision boundaries for rounds one and two. I'm still going to use that. That's my first step here because those were outside the boundaries here. We had 90% in the first round, 80% in the second round in terms of what percentages we can expect to get right. So we're going to do that in the first step. And then if there's games that are not decided, and this is the question I got from my viewers and from my subscribers, let's go back to this prediction model in Excel and use that to pick the winner. That's a very simple way to do this. And then finally, I'm going to use the decision boundaries to pick my contenders, and I'm going to put those teams in the final four. And you're going to see all this on Monday night when I fill out my brackets. I'm going to show you an example of about three or four brackets I'm going to fill out by picking the contenders, picking rounds one and two, and basically using the Ken Palm prediction model to fill out the rest. So that's it for this video. I'm really excited to share with you the Ken Palm prediction formula. It's very simple, very easy to use. You can just put that in a simple spreadsheet there. As I said at the beginning here, I'm doing the ESPN challenge. I'm picking 25 brackets here. So I'm going to spread out my champions across those 25 brackets. So looking forward to this, looking forward to the selection Sunday, which is tomorrow. And very much looking forward to the video coming out Monday night. See you then.